Get ready to level up your gaming experience with an app that's about to become your new best friend. I'm talking about none other than Handheld Control Panel. Handheld Control Panel is the ultimate one-stop shop for all your window gaming handheld needs. Designed with gamers in mind, this software offers a controller-friendly and convenient experience that will revolutionize the way you play your favorite game. Installing HCP is pretty straightforward. You're going to go to the GitHub page, find the release section, download the zip file from the release section. Once that file is downloaded, you're going to extract it. You're going to open up that folder and find handheld control panel application and follow the instructions after. The next step is to import hiatus power plan, which can be found in the resources folder inside handheld control panel. Copy the power plan and paste it into the root folder of your C drive. After that's done, open up command prompt and type in the following command you see on screen. Once the import is complete, go to power plan in Windows and select optimize power saver in the additional plan section. As we open the handheld control panel, a nice simple home screen awaits us, offering a multitude of features. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi toggles, access to mouse mode and volume control, we have the power to adjust brightness, resolution, display scaling, refresh rate. Additionally, we can optimize performance with active core count, EPP, which is short for efficiency power plan, CPU, GPU clock control, and of course fan control. Now with a simple click of the right trigger, you'll be transported to the profile page, one of the program's standout features in my opinion. Here you can create individual profiles for each game and it will automatically load as you launch the game reminiscent of AMD's Adrenaline software. Next up is the action page, your gateway to convenient shortcuts. Now here you'll find quick access to open and close HCP as well as activate mouse mode with specific controller presses. There are a variety of other shortcuts you can create like volume control and brightness for example. Now by default it includes Steam Big Picture access and quick TDP controls. However, if you don't use Steam Big Picture or find yourself accidentally triggering the TDP controls in game, simply hit X to delete the command. Moving on, we have the mouse mode page, solely dedicated to settings while in mouse mode. By default, the right stick is set to WASD, but I personally configured mine for scrolling and adjusted the mouse sensitivity to my liking. Take note that you can customize any button on your controller to perform a desired function. It's all about tailoring your experience to perfection. All right, so the next page we have is the app launcher page. Now, while this page is empty, I'm going to show you in a little bit how to sync up your game so that they show up here. Lastly, let's dive into the settings page where you have full control. You'll be able to adjust the fan settings to create a fan curve to optimize cooling. You can check your current version of the app and you'll also have the ability to update the app. There was an update available. I just haven't done it yet. You'll be able to customize the app's theme the app's colors, and if a full change doesn't happen, just press the fan settings button and you should see the color change take full effect. You'll be able to modify the app's location, the language and toggle options like auto startup and uh, auto fan start control. Uh, you have the ability to increase your GPU clock speeds. By default, I was set to 1500, but the 6800U paired with the 680M goes to 2200 so I adjusted that myself you can adjust the minimum and maximum TDP it's up to it goes all the way up to 85 just don't be a daredevil you don't want to ruin your machine don't go to 85 I would say the max for the one X player 2 you can go to like 35 you just got to watch your temps now let's explore game syncing Simply hit the sync games button and once it's finished head over to the app launcher page to witness your games magically appear But the real magic happens on the profile page Each game now has its own profile Meaning that when you access and launch a game it automatically applies the corresponding profile you created Now on to the exciting part optimizing games using HCP while a one-size-fits-all profile might be ideal It's not always that straightforward some games perform well at 15 TDP, while others demand 20 TDP. But fear not, I'm going to share my method for discovering the optimal settings, and the best part, it only takes a few minutes. So let's dive right in.
To start the process of optimizing games, first open up RTSS and select Setup. Click on Plugins and create a new layout and name it Empty. Save and leave RTSS running in the background. Next, open up Hardware Info and click on Settings. Click on the RTSS tab and find Core Clocks and set the value to Maximum. If you want, you can copy the positions I put in as well. Then find Active Core Count and set the value to Average. Now find the GPU Effective Core Clocks and set that value to Average as well. And it's not needed, but I like to see the charge rate, and I set that value to current. Now let's jump into Modern Warfare 2 and see how the process works. I'll be using an 18 watt TDP at 1080p. Before you optimize, make sure you set graphics settings to your liking. We're going to be running everything on auto to get a baseline and adjust from there. Now before we use the benchmark tool, we're going to quickly go into our hardware info, and hit the reset button so that we can get a clear picture of the values needed. Now you can see here that we get close to our target of 60 FPS, but the lows are concerning. Under 30 FPS will introduce a moderate amount of stutters. Now optimizing won't really increase FPS, TDP sort of takes care of that, but optimizing will increase the lows for more stable FPS in gameplay. So now that we have a snapshot, the way I optimize is simple. Negate 400 to 500 megahertz from the max CPU clock, add 200 to 300 megahertz to the average GPU effective core clock, and decrease the active core count to the average amount used. Simple. Now adjusting the core count usually helps with the lows and some people might just say, fine, I'll just change the cores and leave the CPU and GPU on auto. Let's take a look and see what happens when you do that. Now you can see here that the lows increase a bit, but the average FPS takes a hit. So let's adjust the core clocks and the GPU clocks along with the core count. Now you can see how everything comes together. The average FPS jumps back up to normal, and the average lows increase a significant amount, which can help reduce major FPS drops and stutters while playing. Now the next game we're going to test is Hogwarts. I'll be using 1080p at an 18 watt TDP again, and because there's no benchmark tool, I'll be using an app called FPS Monitor, which I'll post a link to in the description below. I'll try to walk a small section of the map and gather info. After that, I'll optimize and walk the same section again, and we'll try to see what the difference is. Now the last game we're going to check out is Diablo 4, which is a newly released game. Here we're going to have a little fun. We're going to test this game at a 20 watt TDP at 1600p, which is the max resolution of the One X Player 2. Now because I'm going to test in 1600p, we are most likely going to see minimal gains or none at all from optimizing due to the fact that the GPU will be the component mostly used even if FSR is enabled. 